Hi, my name is Kyle Fricker, and I'm an undergraduate student at the University of Florida, majoring in chemical engineering. Over the summer, I interned at, the, at UF's Bioenergy and Sustainability Lab, a little off campus. We had many projects ranging from uh, studying biogas production in anaerobic digesters to growing both our own food and energy crops. But my personal project specifically involved biodiesel. Biodiesel is a biofuel produced from the reaction of vegetable oil with an organic solvent, typically methanol, and also a catalyst. Typically, virgin oils are used in industry. The most common types are from soybean and canola seed. What I've tried to use is waste vegetable oil, which makes the overall process more sustainable as you are converting waste into energy. Here's a look at our student-built biodiesel refinery. One of my many projects is producing some biodiesel from waste vegetable oil. We store it in the 55 gallon drums and it is processed in this reactor made of a hot water heater that was remodeled in order to handle the reaction of with a waste vegetable oil with a organic alcohol, in our case methanol, and the catalyst lye or sodium hydroxide. After the reaction takes place in the reactor, it takes maybe half a day, we allow gravity to separate the two products, which are glycerol and the biodiesel. At this point, the biodiesel isn't quite ready for use in engines or automobiles. Looking inside to the reactor, this is, after everything settled, this is kind of what we would see. We'd see some more bodies on top, but we'd see this glycerin layer that we would drain off to get our, our biodiesel product that we feed to the wash water tank. It, it must be dried, and wa or washed first, and then dried, so as to purify it a little more. And this is done by pumping it into another tank where water is sprayed through small nozzles over the top. This water then slowly filters through the biodiesel and as it does this, picks up the remaining methanol and lye that, that hasn't yet um, fallen completely to the bottom. And after each wash, we drain the bottom and once the wash water becomes clear, then you know that your biodiesel is washed. Then it's fed into this drying tank, but we have a heating coil wrapped around it. And this will slowly, just slowly evaporate all the remaining water that's left in it until the biodiesel is clear enough to see through a mason jar. And at that point, we put in another 55 gallon drum for storage and it's ready for use in cars and I'm actually running it in a, my, my Jetta which can run biodiesel. So here's my car, I've been running V100 or 100% biodiesel in it for the last couple months and uh, just for fun I threw on this little decal to say it's a bio TDI. So now I decided to continue my study of biodiesel and try using a different solvent as opposed to methanol, which is currently produced using fossil fuels in industry. Some advantages of using ethanol as opposed to methanol are that it is a renewable chemical. We can produce it from sugar crops grown in the U.S. There also was recently a boom in ethanol production from government incentives produce E85 for cars. <clears throat> it is easier to handle, it's less toxic, and it's also more economical. Some of the disadvantages of using ethanol stem from the food versus fuel debate, which is related to the public opinion of ethanol in general, and also the environmental effects of mass producing ethanol on the limited farmland we have in our country. 
Also, it is very hard to get anhydrous ethanol, which is what is required for the transesterification reaction, as any water could contaminate the biodiesel product. When you produce ethyl esters, which are also biodiesel, the chemical properties are nearly exactly the same as the, the methyl esters produced using methanol in the transesterification reaction. Both have nearly the same heat content, and a, a small problem stems from the fact that ethyl esters have a slightly greater affinity for glycerol than methyl esters. Here's a diagram of the two reactions. The top is the reaction with methanol and the bottom with ethanol. As you can see, they're very similar. There's only a slight difference in the complexity of the ethyl esters with an extra carbon in the chain. But as I mentioned previously, this has no effect on the quality of the biodiesel produced. Just a quick look at the sample calculation of how the amount of ethanol was determined. On the top, I have a, di a diagram showing the stoichiometry for the methanol reaction, and that <coughs> shows you that you need a volume ratio of 1 to 8 of methanol to oil. When the same calculations are done with ethanol, you need a ratio of 1 to 5.5 ethanol to oil. This shows you that you will need more ethanol than methanol for the same reaction with the same amount of waste vegetable oil or virgin oil. And this excess is directly proportional to the excess used in the methanol reaction and only differs due to the difference in molecular weight and density of ethanol versus methanol. The ratio for the catalyst is determined via a similar calculation. While the vegetable oil is heating, I, I make the methoxide by mixing 22% uh, by volume of methanol with our sodium hydroxide. <clears throat> and um, you have to do this very quickly so that, that the hydrophilic sodium hydroxide doesn't absorb too much water from the atmosphere and contaminate your biodiesel batch. I'm researching right now using ethanol as opposed to methanol in the biodiesel reaction. For the past week or so I've had bad luck it seems and could not get the phase separation with the biodiesel made from or made using ethanol but uh, today I made my first batch and got it to separate. You can see the two layers. There's the glycerin layer is larger because in order to get the the, uh, the phases to separate, I added a little bit of crude glycerol to uh, initiate the separation, and it worked perfectly. We are trying to move towards using ethanol as a reactant in the biodiesel process because. It's come, it comes from plants, unlike methanol, which currently in industry is produced from natural gas, fossil fuel. And um, the goal in the long run is to take the glycerol byproduct of the biodiesel reaction, ferment it, and distill it into ethanol, and recycle it back to the beginning of the reaction, making uh, the whole system more sustainable and closed loop. When you produce ethyl esters, <clears throat> there is a problem with the co-solvency of glycerol. It is solvent in both ethyl esters and water, so after the reaction, you are stuck with a, a mixture of everything, as opposed to in the, when you produce methyl esters, the crude glycerol simply falls to the falls out of solution via gravity. After researching on the internet and experimenting in the lab, it was found that the addition of water and crude glycerol initiates the separation and pulls the gl crude glycerol out of solution with the ethyl esters.